Det här det är en del till en lastbil. I röret här så strömmar ett pulserande luftflöde. Och för att ta bort, minska ljudgenereringen på grund av de här luftvolympulsationerna så har man satt till ett antal sidogrenar som ni ser här. Här, här, här och här. Så att de här är utformade på två sätt. Med två, för att uppfylla två villkor. Dels är förstås måtten här, volymerna och, och storlekarna på rören och såna här saker valda så att de ska släcka ut var sin frekvens i det luftvolympulsation som eh, sker i röret här. Och dels är de förstås utformade geometriskt så att de ska få plats i motorrummet på lastbilen. Jag tänkte att jag skulle demonstrera då hur en en speciell typ av sån här sidogren fungerar. Den här typen, det är en kvartsvågsresonator. Så här finns nu bakom mig här en, en illustration då av en <coughs> kvartsvågsresonator. Så att vi har en högtalare, ett rör, ett utlopp. Och sen ser ni den här tillsatsen då, röret, som avgrenas från huvudledningen här. Här har vi då en stopp, en, en vägg i princip då, som är en avslutning på den här kvartsvåsresonatorn. Så när jag ändrar längden här då så kan jag i princip stämma av den här kvartsvåsresonatorn till att ta kol så att säga på olika frekvenser i det ljud som högtalaren sänder ut här. Så att nu ska jag ta och eh, sätta igång den här. <hör> och jag kommer att lägga ut en frekvens i högtalaren här som ligger på ungefär 440 hertz. Och nu ska jag då ändra läget, ändra längden på den här kvartsfogsresonatorn så får ni se vad som händer här. Här någonstans har vi ett minimum. Och här har vi ett maximum. Här hade vi minimat. Så att eh, beroende på längden här så att säga så kan man då släcka ut delvis i alla fall olika frekvenser. Och det är då principen för hur man dimensionerar den här typen av sidogren för att släcka ut ljud som transporteras i såna här rör eller kanalledningssystem. So, the duct silencer is as you know a part of the system. So we have a source which could be a IC engine, the fan, compressor, or something else that produces a flow, a fluctuating flow. Then we have our pipe or duct system <clears throat> with uh, our <clears throat> silencer. And then finally, we have a termination with the outlet and the environment to the outlet, which could be a infinite space or half space or a room or something. Like that. So since it's a system, it is clear that the components of the system, the source, the duct system and the termination influence each other. So the possibilities, the ability of the silence to reduce sound also depends on the source properties and the termination properties. So it's not the silencer in itself that determines the noise reduction, sound reduction, when you install it in a system. So the purpose of the silencer is to reduce the flow pulsations at the outlet of the <clears throat> duct system. Because if we do that, then we also reduce the sound radiation from the outlet. Smaller flow, uh, flow pulsations means smaller noise, smaller sound lower sound. 
And this is a typical example of what we already said. Um, is noted noise abatement along the path. So if we want to, we can um, model it as a frequency response function system with where we have the, um, the source uh, strength, the vol acoustic volume flow Q, we have the frequency response function that couples the source with the receiver, the sound pressure at the receiver. And um, the purpose of the silencer is to reduce the magnitude of the frequency response function of the path that couples the source, the acoustic volume flow with the sound pressure at the receiver. So when we talk about duct silencers, there are two different principles that you very often combine in a single silencer. The first one is based on reflection and wave interaction. And those silencer and silencer components are co called reactive silencers. The second type, oh, oh, sorry, this is one example of a typical reactive silencer. And as you can see here, all these volumes that are coupled via pipes and such things are designed to sort of reduce certain parts of the frequency range by this principle of reflection and wave interaction. The next type of principle is resistive silencers. And those silencer components act by um, acoustic energy dissipation. So they sort of <clears throat> are composed by acoustic absorbance, as you can see here. So these woolly things here are acoustic absorbance. So that when the sound wave comes here, it gradually dissipates to heat when um, uh, due to friction in this woolly material here. So these are the two basic um, function principles of uh, silencers reactive silencers and resistive silencers. So what kind of requirements do we put on a good silencer design? Well, first of all, there's geometry requirements because very often we have a very limited space where we can put or install the silencer. Uh, secondly, uh, all silencers have a certain static pressure drop. So it requires energy to, pr well, to push the medium, flowing medium through the silencer. And if we keep this um, static pressure drop as low as possible, then we need a low energy consumption in order to push the medium through the silencer. And that is a good thing. And uh, this uh, pressure drop is caused by basically turbulent boundary layers between the flowing media and the duct walls. So the, um, uh, well, the, uh, when the, the vortices here, the boundary layer vortices are uh, formed, then the energy is taken from the flow. And that is caused, uh, well, that energy loss causes this static pressure drop. And one can show that this pressure drop is proportional to the square of the mean flow speed. So the higher flow speed, the lower, sorry, the higher the static pressure drop. So in this case, since we have continuity in flow here, uh, we have higher losses in this narrow cross section than in this wider cross-section here because the flow speed is higher in this section than over here. There's a second um, phenomena that also um, increases this um, static pressure drop and that is a vortex shedding when you have sudden area, cross-section area increases. So 
when the cross-section area suddenly increases like this, then you get also vortex shedding in this region here. And like before, this vortex um, shedding uh, takes its energy from the flow. A uh, third thing that a good design requires is low self-generated noise. Uh, so when you have a flow through a duct, you have these turbulent boundary la layers. And this, I mean, the vortices there, creates noise, a sort of random noise, like shh. And the higher the flow speed, the higher the um, boundary layer noise. There are also whistling sounds. If you have, <clears throat> well, these whistling sounds are quite, well, very often caused by feedback loops between the flow and the sound wave. Uh, one example of this uh, is uh, the, something that is called the Struhal tones aeolian tones and things like that the fourth requirement is of course what we are looking for specifically in this course that is that we get an adequate sound reduction at the frequencies that do dominates the noise the sound at the outlet so we must design, choose components of the silencer so that the sound reduction is good enough. So how can we describe the um, efficiency of a silencer? That is how efficiently the silencer reduces the sound in the duct. Well, there are two commonly used measures. The first one is transmission loss, and it compares the incident uh, acoustic power to the transmitted acoustic power. And it is basically the difference between the sound power level at the incident side and the sound power level at the transmission side, downstream the silencer. The other alternative is insertion loss and it compares the sound pressure level before the silencer has been installed with the sound pressure level after the silencer has been installed so before installation you see you have the pure duct here and then after the installation when we have installed the silencer so it compares so it's a difference between the sound pressure level before installation and sound pressure level after the installation. And it's important that you measure at the same point. So same measurement point. So transmission loss, it's a sort of a measure of the reduction capacity of the component of the silencer in itself when it's installed in reflection-free conditions so that the source and um, termination does not influence the uh, uh, sound field. The insertion loss, on the other hand, that measures exactly what you want to measure, the reduction of the entire system's sound pressure level at the observation point. So, when to use which quantity? I mean, why not always use the insertion loss since that gives you what you really want to know? Well, it depends on the situation. The first example that illustrates this is, suppose you're a subcontractor to an engine manufacturer. And as a subcontractor, you will have access to engine acoustic data, I mean the source impedance and the source strength vector that gives you this fl acoustic flow from the source. You will also have access to acoustic data for the termination, the load, the acoustic load impedance. So you will have access to all 
system data needed. And then you can predict by calculations how, uh, well, the effect of, of, of uh, installing the silencer in the system. So in that case, insertion loss is the obvious choice. On the other hand, if you are producer of a general purpose silencer, so that, I mean, anyone from the streets can come into your shop and ask for a silencer. Then you have no access to source data, source impedance or source strength, and you have no access to a termination data. And then, obviously, there is no other possibility to try then to try to use transmission loss that gives you a, at least an idea on how the silencer in itself affects the sound propagation in a duct.